And we are back this week with an exclusive, exclusive Purple Pants podcast interview. I am so excited to be joined by Desi Williams, contestant on the upcoming The Challenge USA season that will be airing July 6th at 9.30 on CBS. So let's, I want to say let's formally welcome Desi to the podcast. But if you are an OG Purple Pants podcast member, then you know this is not Desi's first time on the podcast. She has come on multiple times covering a lot of different shows. But anyway, welcome back to the podcast and my boo, my friend, Desi Williams. Thanks, Bryce. You know, I love the Purple Pants podcast. I love the posse. So glad to be back. It's been yes. a while. It is. It has been a while. It's been even longer since you've been on our TV screen. So it's so I the excitement that I have for you when I learned that you were going to be on the challenge, you know, <laughs> I was going crazy. <laughs> OK, baby boy was the number one fan from day one. I appreciate it. Listen. So you're the first interview and I'm happy for it to be you. Yes, I'm so excited to have this exclusive interview and just shout out to CBS for allowing this to happen. Um, I really want to just get into before, you know, we know you from Survivor, but before Survivor, I don't know if people like really know that you're Desi Williams, the two time Miss Virginia uh, of the USA pageants. Like, I, like, I don't know if people really know that about you. <laughs> You got fancy, right? <laughs> this is real fancy. Okay, listen, we stepped our game up on the Purple Pants podcast. Yes, and if you, this, you can also follow along to this exclusive interview on the Bryce Isaiah YouTube page. So go over there, click, su click subscribe, and give this video a thumbs up. But yes, come on, Miss Virginia, two times. Like, what was that experience like for you? Whew, so I competed at Miss America first and then Miss USA about two years later. Um, the two experiences are like completely different but they're I mean either way they're stressful they're strenuous like Miss America you spend 15 days there like preparing for competition night Miss USA it's 10 days before final competition um but what I will say is like I went into Survivor fresh off of like this whole long four or five year pageant journey um and one thing pageants do do is like they don't turn you into a different person but you do feel like you have to be like a certain like way so you feel like you always have to be politically correct like there was a part of me that felt like I couldn't curse in public like so I could be me but like a small portion of me so overall the experience was great it certainly like opened up my my eyes to the world of like bigger things and entertainment and being on stage in front of millions of people like that was something I obviously never experienced before that um but on the flip side of that it does sort of morph a little bit in your head like what you think is okay and not okay to say in front of millions of people on television so do you feel like that helped you at all on survivor uh kind of coming from the pageant world miss miss virginia um and going into survivor because you know I, I didn't play survivor as long as you i feel like i was out there for nine to eleven days you were out <laughs> there on uh heroes hustlers and healers for 21 days do you feel like that sense of being on the stage and performing helped you in the survivor game because we do know being on survivor it is a performance you have to act you gotta lie you gotta like stab people in the back do you feel like that at all helped you so i think it helped and hurt the way it helped me is like i do feel like i was never a hated player you know what i mean like in the world of patents you learn how to be adaptable and depending upon who you're talking to like you know how to talk to that person to make make sure you're not ruffling their feathers the wrong way so i will say in that regard it helped me, but I say the one way in which it probably hurt me on Survivor was I was too afraid of being disliked, mm. where I felt like I was always kind of walking on eggshells. And there were certainly times on Survivor where I felt like, you know, in retrospect, I should have spoken my mind a little bit more firmly, like I should have stood my ground. But I feel like I was so afraid coming from this pageant world of being like this perfect version of me that is acceptable to everyone. Um, that that ultimately was part of my downfall in the game. Um, but I will say, like, I didn't make any huge enemies in the game of Survivor. And that is something most people can't say, unfortunately. It's funny that you say that because I recently rewatched your season uh, just because I was like, let me just watch this and see what my girl Desi up to. And it is interesting because me knowing you outside of the game, I know that you are a very lively, uh, very upfront person, speak your mind, opinionated. And I do think that it is interesting that pre-merge, 
you were like, I don't want to use the term invisible, but you were definitely like held back. And I feel like it wasn't until you kind of sort of made the merge and you met up with our homeboy, the Joe, that is the Mena, uh, <laughs> where we really got to see, it almost seemed as, as if like you got the permission to like, it's time to go full throttle. Let me bring this home for the people. Yeah, I would say that to a certain extent. And Joe really, like, from, you know, Joe, we had our ups and downs. But from day one, like, I did trust Joe in the game much more than probably anybody else did. Um, so I do feel like you got to see, like, a very small glimmer of my personality, maybe. But I was still holding back because I'm, I was still so conscious and aware of there being cameras, even though there's a camera on you 24 seven, like even when you're asleep, there is a camera on you. Mm -hmm. And people said like, oh, you get used to it. You don't even notice the cameras are there. Like there was never a point for me where I was like being on TV. Like I always yeah. had like, I'm on TV, all these little pageant girls watching me. Like I need to make sure I'm still at the end of the day on my best behavior. So yeah, I would agree with what you said where I, I kind of felt like, yeah, I, I was invisible because I didn't want to ruffle any feathers. And that's how, you know, that's what's entertaining. Well, I completely get it because I feel the same way. Like my first season on some, I'm, my first season, like I got multiple. <laughs> You're speaking <laughs> into existence. That's right. Yeah. It's coming. Uh, on, on my original season, I felt the same way. I felt um, at the time when we recorded Survivor Kageon, I did not realize that I was going, the, op the first openly gay Black player. I knew that I was going to be a Black gay player. And for me, that really kind of like was always in the back of my mind. I do not want to come off as like lazy. I don't want to come off at like all of these things. And so there's just, I feel like as people of color, you being a Black woman, me being a gay man, like there are so many things that we feel like we have on our back that we have to represent and we have to like, and I really wish that in retrospect for me that I just play my, like myself and trust enough in myself to know that I'm a good human being. I might be a little mm -hmm. spicy at times, but you know, sometimes people need a little spicy. Um, do you feel like, well, I feel like another thing that people don't realize about you, uh, during Survivor is that girl you was a, you was a challenge beast out there okay you played no games when it came to the challenges on Survivor now is that something that you were all that you knew that you would be good at or do you feel like you surprised yourself out there I will say and another kind of carryover from pageants is like although all people see is like the pretty stuff on TV with pageants like if you are a successful pageant winner you have trained your butt off you have had discipline you have been the most uncomfortable and still pushed through like there are those elements of pageant preparation um so I felt like I wasn't ever going to be the worst at a challenge but I will say I surprised myself even on Survivor like because nothing you do on Survivor is something you would ever do in normal everyday life like right. you know nothing um so it was sort of like confidence building to be like oh I got this Oh, I got this too. Oh, y'all think this is hard? This really ain't that hard. Um, so again, like it was helpful, but there were moments of the show and even watching it back, like when Jeff would be like, look at Desi making this look easy. And I feel like I was trying so hard to be like under the radar that I was like, why does this man keep blowing up my spot? Like, just <laughs> let me be great under the radar so don't nobody else know that this challenge really ain't that hard. Oh. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that for every challenge, but there were certainly like challenges where I saw people struggling and I was just like, mm, what's really happening here? Oh. Um, so it, it was somewhat shocking, but I knew deep down inside, like I come from the world of competitive cheerleading. I ran track for a while. So like, I knew I had that competitive spirit in me. For me, when I first saw you on the screen, I was like, oh, she's going to be a physical beast because them calf muscles that you got, girl, they are <laughs> nothing to be played with. Um, and, you know, and so I guess it's been the pageant world, then it's been Survivor. And I guess the world, honestly, has not seen you that much, even though you're around, you out, you are very much present on social media. But, you know, to the casual fans, they have not been, they don't know really what's been up with you. And so I just want to take this opportunity because, you know, people don't know, it's not Desi Williams, it's Dr. Desi Williams, okay? You have a doctorate in PT, and I know that over COVID, you have started your own company, A Plus Care. Like, can you please tell us what A Plus Care is and how it came to be? 
Whew, okay, that was like a loaded introduction. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Listen, it's the Purple Kids podcast, girl. You know. <laughs> right, we tied on time. But yeah, so life has definitely changed a whole bunch since I was on Survivor. Like when I was on Survivor, I was working as a professor in Virginia. I have now moved to Los Angeles. Um, and so for people who are like interested in LA or are not familiar with LA, LA is like expensive, like oh. dumb expensive. So I came in working as a PT and I just was like, trying to pan out my life 20 years from now. And I'm like, I cannot keep on working as hard as I'm working to make what I'm working and live a comfortable lifestyle in LA. So that was kind of the impetus that I was like, okay, I need to figure out something else. And although I've never been that interested in the world of entrepreneurship, like I feel like that is the way to be successful as an you know, independent person, especially as a minority. Like if you want to climb the ladder and make some real money like you do have to start your own thing and stop making money for other people so that was kind of the impetus for starting a plus care so it's a mobile physical therapy and occupational therapy company um we're under we've undergone our kind of credentialing experience to become a home health agency as well um so right now we just provide pt and ot we go to people's homes uh, but we're working on getting the credentials to also provide nursing and speech and uh, home health aids to help people like shower and bathe. So it become this kind of like complete healthcare company to service mostly older adults um, is our clientele. Yes, I love that. And being an entrepreneur and kind of going through the credential process and filling out all of the, the paperwork that goes along with this, I'm sure it was an experience. And do you think that that has helped and prepared you uh, in a different type of way for the challenge. Whew, it's still an experience. <laughs> and that's one thing that's one thing about being an entrepreneur. Like every day presents a new challenge and you have to like not to I guess unintended pun, but you have to like rise to that challenge and just figure it out. Um, and so I do think that type of resilience that you create as entrepreneurs certainly serves you well in a game like the challenge or any kind of competition game because you know that like you can't win them all. And if you let one kind of slip in the road stop your whole momentum, like you're screwed. Um, so I will say it was another kind of confidence builder, resilience builder for me to be like, like we have made mistakes over and over again, as I'm sure all entrepreneurs do. And I have had like really sad, dark days and really happy, excited days. Um, and I'd say, you know, if you stay on any competition show for long enough, you are going to feel that same kind of rainbow of emotions. Um, but it's, you know, you've heard, you hear time and time again, like it's how you pick yourself up from those lows that make the biggest difference. Um, and so I will say that being an entrepreneur and having to pick myself up over and over again, certainly was helpful for what happens on the challenge. Yes. Okay. Well, listen, now, now let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's get into why the people is here. The challenge. First of all, let's talk about the, this, the photos. Okay. Now, you know, I'm, I'm a little biased for some of the people on the challenge, but you know, baby, you came out swinging with these promo photos, Desi. I did my best. You know, I did what I did. Um, I mean, one thing you do do in pageants is a lot of taking photos. So they were like, okay. oh, today we have a photo shoot. I was like, okay, say less. Like, even if I fail at anything else that happens in this house here, one thing I can do is take a photo. Listen, so, I, <laughs> so it was hot I, in Argentina, but I came as ready as I could. Okay, listen, you and I have had a couple of photos in our days of us together, and you always stay ready. You okay? You stay ready. You stay with a quick beat. You stay with your hair up, um, and I love it. So I guess my first question about the challenge was, were you surprised when they reached out to you uh, to participate in the challenge? I was, I mean, you kind of laid it out at the beginning of this, like nobody has heard from Desi Williams and it was 2017 when I competed on Survivor, like that was almost half a decade ago. So I for sure thought my reality TV career was gone. Like, and I wasn't sad about it necessarily. I would love, I love to compete, but I had kind of made peace with the fact that those days were behind me. Um, so yeah, I was excited. I was nervous. I was, uh, but most of all, just like honored that, they're creating this cast and somehow somebody like dug my name from the bottom of the barrel to give me this opportunity. No, well, it's definitely not digging your name from the bottom of the barrel because anyone knows that watches Survivor knows that you went out extremely too soon and uh, you're a beast, you're a competitor. Were you, what was your training 
or before I even ask you that, like, what was your experience of the challenge? Did you watch the challenge? Were you like me back in the old days with MTV Roll Rules and they did the first couple of challenges <laughs> with like Melissa, Julie, uh, Rufi, and all of them? Like, did were you on that same level of watching the challenge? Yeah, I would definitely say I was like an old school challenge fan for sure. Um, and my mom, like I had to tell her, I used to like I used to sneak watching MTV when the like original Real World Road Rules Challenge was on. I was not allowed to watch MTV, so uh -huh. I would be like, I'd have my little remote control, my finger on the last button in case my mom walked into the room, so I could change from MTV to PBS, so she thinks I'm watching Arthur. But like I was not allowed to watch MTV. Um, but I was always obsessed with real world road rules like i was i remember that being like my childhood dream like i would love to go on road rules wow um, and then they created like this real world road rules challenge and i was like this is even better like i would love to do that so to now literally 20 plus years later like get the opportunity is like literally a childhood dream come true like a 10 year old like i am completely satisfying every dream my 10 year old self had um so it's it was really special. That is so, that's something I never knew that that was really one of your dreams. And I think that it's so important um, to have black women on shows like this, because, you know, I watch the challenge and, you know, sometimes the diversity is a little lacking. And if we go even to on a deeper level, the diversity of brown skin girls, chocolate girls are none at times. And so when I was able to see the cast and to see like the amazingness that they had, like, you know, between you, Tasha, uh, Cache, Justine, like, you know, just the, uh, the, the array of melanism for me, I just was like this brown skin girl at home to be able to see these beautiful women on a show that historically doesn't normally like have such an array of a cast, I think is uh, really great. And so I'm just so excited to learn that that was uh, a dream of yours to be on the challenge. What was it like? How did you prepare to go on the challenge? Um, I mean, I think people think that we're given like this long time to prepare before we go on the show. Like it doesn't really work like that. Like, you know, there are people who found out literal days before. Oh, wow. So, luckily for me like I work out a lot I tend to be in shape um the only thing I really added to my routine was doing more like trying to do more distance running I tried to add swimming um because you know like most black folks like I can stay alive in the water but I ain't racing nobody through the water um so I tried to add some swimming to my routine to kind of get better with that um but that was those were the biggest things I changed was just a little bit more endurance training and then trying to learn yeah. how to I feel again. like I have to ask to ask. Did you have a trainer? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I know why you asked. So my boyfriend loves to think that he was my trainer. And I will say we went to the gym a few times and lifted together. I don't typically like lift a lot of heavy weights at the gym. Um, so yeah, I guess shout out to Jeremy, yes. my my who he thinks is my trainer, whatever. He can he can be my trainer. Listen, we're so. team Jeremy <laughs> over here. Um, and listen, we don't have a lot of time with you. CBS is very strict on their time policy. <laughs> But I want to just say that I um, was so excited to learn that they were doing this Big Brother, Amazing Race, Survivor, Love Island. And for me, just to see the cast of the big people, the names that they picked, um, and for me to just have so many personal relationships with so many people on this cast, uh, especially the Survivor realm. And, and for me to know literally every one of the Survivors, I was so excited. But again, um, Wendell and I did a first glance video where this is back when they were rumored and people were rumoring it and your name had came up and I gave my list of who I thought could win. And it was Tasha Fox, Sarah Lucina and my girl, Desi Williams. And so, you know, myself and the Purple Pants Posse will be getting behind you this Wednesday, July 6th at 930 to be Team Desi. Before we go, is there, what can we expect from a Desi on this season? We want to get, uh, like, what, what can we expect? Or can <laughs> we expect, expect the unexpected? I mean, I think expect the unexpected. I think I don't know what to expect either. I mean, you've been on reality TV. I've been on reality TV. You never know how anything's going to play back. Um, so I am hopeful that like people are able to see a little bit more of my personality this season versus what they were able to see on Survivor. Um, I hope I, I think I felt more comfortable in who I am. Obviously, I'm five years older. I'm in my 30s now. 
Um, so I say it's not the unexpected, but like stay tuned and uh, yeah, make sure to check it out. That's the easiest way to find out because I don't know what's going to be shown the same way y'all don't know what's going to be shown. Yes. Well, listen, you know, it's Team Desi over here. And before you go to anyone that is listening or watching on the Bryce Isaiah YouTube channel, please let them know where they can follow you at on the Instagram, the Twitters. And yes, Desi is on the TikTok now. And if you have not been following Desi on the Instagram, you are doing yourself a disservice because she is blessing your timeline multiple times a day. She is giving you reels. She's coming out of the water. She's showing you filter, not filter. She Listen, you're getting it all. So Desi, where can they follow you at? <laughs> Um, on Instagram, I'm Desi J. Williams, D-E-S-I-J Williams. Uh, same thing on Twitter, but like my Twitter game ain't that hot. Um, <laughs> and TikTok, we work on it. We're, we're working on it. TikTok, I'm also trying to make my way, but my TikTok is doctor, so just B-R, Desi J. Williams. Yes. Well, Desi, it's been an honor to have this exclusive, let me say it again, exclusive interview with you ahead of the new Challenge USA that will be premiering July 6th on CBS. Desi, it's an honor. You know I love you, Team Desi, all the way. Uh, I can't wait to see how you do. We will talk soon. But listen, before we go, it's a... It's a... It's a... It's a Purple Pants podcast. Hey. I mean, I could do the whole song if you oh, want. Oh, I mean, well, let's, well, let's test, test, test your posse member card. Oh, wait. Oh. Wait. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Purple Time Pants Time to unwind. Pie. I want to get some box wine. Hey, yes. Love it. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Let me say Okay, that. listen. That's listen. To, to be continued. Yes. To be and Listen, maybe we can schedule it now, but maybe uh, after the season air, we can get you for a postseason interview and, and see what the real tea is. But honestly, love you, Desi. Thank you so much. And we are rooting for you over here at the Purple Pants Podcast. Love you too. It's a, it's a, it's a purple pants. It's a purple pants. It's a purple pants podcast. You better get your headphones and listen up quick. Ooh. It's a purple pants podcast. You better listen in public. Might make your stomach hurt. Ooh. It's the Purple Pants Podcast, you're trying to unwind, you better get that box wine. It's the Purple Pants Podcast, you're trying to get your snack, you better hurry right back though. It's the Purple Pants, it's the Purple Pants.